I'd be happy to. Uh, Morgan O'Sullivan here with Flight Co. Tower and Flight Co. Brewing in Denver. Uh, the tower we took over uh, is the old Stapleton International Airport Air Traffic Control Tower. Uh, so we have three floors of entertainment, six bowling lanes, two floors of arcade, 18 holes of mini golf, six axe throwing lanes, uh, three golf simulators, ping pong, darts. I'm sure I'm missing something. Um, so a little bit of, little bit of fun for everybody here at the tower, as well as an extensive food and beverage menu. Uh, we opened here at uh, in August of 22, um, and have been going strong ever since. And it's it is a beautifully epic place. If you ever drive past it, you will be. It's it's amazing to drive up to. It's in a neighborhood, and all of a sudden there's this tower hanging above everything, and you, it's uh, it's pretty ridiculous. So yeah, it's the it's the last remaining building of the former uh, airport, which was at one point the fourth busiest airport in the world. And and yeah, like you said, Tim, it's sitting right in the middle of a suburban neighborhood, so it's pretty hard to miss. Yeah, it is. Um, thank you, Morgan. Chad, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Sure. Yeah, <clears throat> my name is Chad Beal. I'm with uh, Bohemian Bowl in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, we have five locations um, spread out mostly through the state and one out in Texas. Um, it is, uh, you know, I always say like bar food done well is kind of our style of food. So we're we're making everything from scratch, but we're doing ground and house burgers and, uh, you know, corned beef made from scratch for our Rubens and fish and chips, you know, ham breaded and, um, you know, uh, wild caught and everything fish. So um, you know, it's, a, it's bar food, but bar food done well, like I said, and, uh, and then craft beer, um, you can kind of see a little bit in the background. I'm sitting at the bar in that picture, but we've got 32 beers on draft, um, all, uh, we try to focus on local as much as we can. So in all of our different locations, they're focused on local breweries, um, and then a big bourbon selection too, um, about 80 different bourbons and whiskeys, um, and then a, a really unique cocktail program too. Awesome. Thank you, Chad. Um, yeah, I, I just quick interjection. I'm going to Craft Brewing Convention next week, uh, as maybe some of you are going. Uh, every brewery in the country is talking about the fact that you have to be a restaurant too. So I, obviously you're paying a lot of attention to the food. We also had Allstat Brewery on one of our webinars and they grind everything. They buy the whole cow. They, they go through the whole the whole deal and they, they have a full chef. So pretty serious about their food. Great to, great to hear your focus there, Chad. Um, Tim, would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm um, Tim Wilson. I work for Caboose Brewing Company up here in Northern Virginia. Uh, we've got two spots right now. Uh, one's in the Mosaic area and one is in Vienna. Uh, the one in Vienna is our original location. It's kind of like a much more like traditional type service tap room. You know, uh, people come in in the morning, they kind of get coffee, hang out, and then in the evening it turns into very much so a restaurant. So that, that type of service model there. And then our other location in Mosaic is... Uh, much larger it's uh three three floors of a huge uh beer garden out there so in the morning people also come in they do a lot of work we've got a lot of coffee house there and then in the evening it turns into much more uh, of your traditional tap room restaurant uh, very large parties reservations things like that um so it's it's interesting to have two different places that just operate so differently even under the same company yeah it's uh i live nearby and it's a uh, very different demographic in both places as well. Um, thanks, Tim. And then uh, last but not least, Will, would you mind, uh, uh, Will, just quick context, uh, Schedulefly is a core partner of GoTab. We're very proud to be partnered with uh, Will and his team. They have a fantastically slick and easy to use uh, scheduling system that has, I don't remember the exact number, more than 5,000 locations, I believe, across the country. So Will, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Tim, and thank you all for joining. Uh, yes, yeah, so ScheduleFly, just simple restaurant employee scheduling software backed by legendary customer service. Some of our customers are on here. You know us well. Some of you that are not our customers may have never even heard of us. We're, we're a small team of five. We've been doing it 17 years. We bootstrapped the business, and we've grown to about 5,500 customers through word of mouth. Um, I want to brag on each person on here real quickly. Uh, Tim is the only... GoTab is the only company that we built a integration with, and that's in large part because Tim and his team made it easy and made it happen, and we absolutely love what they're doing. Um, Morgan, I have not been to your place, but I have looked at your site, and I've talked to folks I know out in Denver that, that verify it's badass, so that's way to go. Uh, Tim, I did go to uh, Tim Wilson. I went with Tim McLaughlin to Caboose. 
freaking cool place. Y'all are doing a great job there. And Chad Beal, I've known the longest. Uh, Chad is a humble guy who I have a massive amount of respect for. Cut his chops at Carabas and Chick-fil-A. Got Bohemian Bull started like 10, 12 years ago. Um, I, we have a podcast. I've done over 500 episodes. He's one of the top, top operators I've had a chance to interview over the years. I've gotten to know him well. And it was very clear to me early on when he had his one Bohemian Bull that he was going to make that thing super successful. And here he is. And he's got five or six, as he said, and a lot more on the way. So uh, great audience. Super proud to be a part of this today, y'all. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Will. Um, I do want to add, we weren't able to uh, have uh, join us one of our co-sponsors and actually a great partner is Pour My Beer. GoTab does a ton of business with them. Many of our uh, fantastic clients use Pour My Beer. Um, but unfortunately, they couldn't join us today. I did want to mention if you're ever looking at a great tap wall system, they're one of the leaders in the space. So quick ad, don't usually do that, but I did want to say uh, thanks for being uh, part of the, the ecosystem and helping our clients succeed. Um, with that, I want to go ahead and jump over to, uh, well, actually, I guess I'm supposed to introduce myself. I am the CEO of GoTab. Uh, many of you know me. Um, we're a very client-centric uh, location. I wish I could say at a thousand clients per employee, because uh, that would be pretty fantastic, like Will's company, but I don't. Uh, we have uh, 24 by 7 support for our clients. We do a lot of stuff to make sure things are uh, high touch, and uh, we're focused on operations. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, the different businesses and operations and what we're seeing in hybrid service. Um, I, it goes to have, for those of you who don't know, we started as a QR system in 2018. Mind you, that was two years before anybody thought it was a good idea. Uh, in 2020, all of a sudden it became a good idea. And then I'll tell you the bad story is in 2021, there was a very strong social backlash. And I'm sure Chad will tell you about how that is in the South because it, it's it's regional in the country. Um, but GoTab is now a full POS because we feel like you need to address guests wherever they want to come from. So if they want to talk to a server, great. If they want to order on their phone, great. If they want to go back and forth and sometimes walk out, great. We think you should be able to do that however is most convenient. Um, and this whole conversation that we think is really important in hospitality is meet the guests where they want to be met. Not, not how you want to dictate it to them, meet it where they want to be met. And I think many of us will have many stories about all the different expectations that guests have uh, and some of the challenges that come with dealing with technology. So with that, I'll go ahead and uh, I don't know if we have a geographic model. I guess we're going to start in order. I see I have a list. We'll go ahead and start with uh, Chad, since Chad has a place that it's pretty conventional, I believe, uh, in Charleston. And I know the area. My father was just there and humorously he was not at Chad's place and he was saying how hard it was to get his check but I doubt that's true at Chad's place so I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> let you talk yeah absolutely so I think one of the things that we implemented um years ago first of all I guess I'll step back and say it is full service um we we attempted to integrate QR codes into some simple things like um, some menus for our uh, draft system because it is an ongoing rotating draft system. So it changes um, every day. Pretty much we're having four or five um, drafts that that are changed. So um, so with that being said, we tried this QR code thing and um, we just got a lot of pushback from our guests on it. Um, we're, we weren't really sure why. Um, we were kind of surprised, but um, it wasn't something that, that in our uh, establishment that people really love to do. So um, with that being said, one of the things that we did uh, start doing was uh, handheld devices. So like our, our servers, you talk about waiting for your check, um, you know, it's right there. And then, you know, because they have a handheld device. Um, so they're taking orders at the table and closing out checks at the table and everything like that all at the same time. So, um, so it works out really well that way. Sorry, I was muted. Um, cool. Uh, I think I'm going to go maybe backward in service models because I know Tim Wilson actually has some customers who prefer that way and some customers who prefer the other. So, Tim, why don't you chat a little bit about uh, what you see you know, between the different maybe demographics, locations and whatnot of uh, service? Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, to agree with the chat, we have one location that is a full service model, but it also is like that hybrid thing we have. So we have like an outdoor area where people just walk up. They're happy to use the QR code, maybe not talk to anyone, but we also have servers out there with the handhelds 
walking around waiting on tables um, where people can come show up to the bar. So it's like that. If you want to order up a QR code, you can, but otherwise you've also got the option to talk to a waiter, get your order taken traditionally, however you want to, you can pay with your phone or you can pay it to pay with the, uh, the handheld. Um, our other location, the larger one, that's one where people definitely come in all the time. Um, just walk in, seat themselves wherever they want, order off a QR code from the table, and they have little to no interaction with the with the staff at all. But we also do employ um, our staff to go around once in a while and see, see if they can get them anything. They have handhelds, but for the majority of the time, they're, most of the people are happy in the, in the mosaic area to just kind of be left alone and do their own thing, which is great since we have this huge beer garden in the second level and everything. It's it just reduces the amount of stuff that we have to use for it because we can now just put everybody for it's like running drinks, busing tables, bringing food up to them, um, really just kind of taking care of their needs without having to like dedicate staff to just a section or to a table. So um, the two models are pretty great, pretty interesting when you have one that's whatever you want to do and the other one is a full service type thing. Yeah, I just, uh, I ran to kick my dog out of the room. One funny side note is uh, dog owners love being able to stay on the patio and order from their phone. Um, and as anybody who tries to staff a patio, staffing patios is impossible. We actually just opened a food hall that has a patio and they're like, we cannot staff the patio. We don't know if the weather turns, you know, what, what do we do? Uh, and so that's at least what we've seen, even no matter what your service model, QRs on patios are are really helpful, at least in our experience. Um, uh, and then we'll go out to Flightco. I've heard it called uh, the new or little California in Colorado. So, uh, Morgan, would you mind giving us a little background? <laughs> you guys hey, that's here? that's that's great. That's where I'm from, so <clears throat> fits yeah. fits perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we do uh, more of the hybrid model that Tim was describing here at the tower. Uh, with 20, 27,000 square feet inside to manage and another 12 on the patio, um, staffing would just be ridiculous without it. We, we couldn't afford to exist. Um, so it is a little bit of choose your own adventure. You're greeted by a host when you walk in. And if you know, you're a first time guest, you get the full rundown. Uh, if you've been there before and are comfortable with how things work, they kind of let you go by. Uh, Self-seating. And then the option inside to order from the QR code or from a staff member walking around with a handheld. Um, so again, <clears throat> offering traditional table service as well as the QR ordering system. Uh, and then the expectation that's set on the patio um, is QR service only uh, for the exact reason that you said. It's impossible to staff a patio, uh, especially here in Denver. Summertime, we get those 20, 30 minute thunderstorms rolling through um, and one second to the next, it, it, gets, it gets real tough uh, to have the right number of people out there. Um, so we can staff significantly less than a traditional service model would dictate uh, for a space our large, as, as large as ours. Um, and that's really to our advantage. Uh, there's some <clears throat> initial pushback uh, with adoption, but I feel like now that we're a year and a half in, uh, the, the regulars that we have in the neighborhood um, really enjoy the system because they come in, order however they want. And especially if they're on that QR, that tab follows them throughout the building to the various activities that we have on multiple levels. And they get to have one tab for their entire experience. And when it's time to leave, they just leave. And especially with our target demo of young families with young kids, um, when it's time for them to leave, it was time for them to leave 10 minutes ago. And the ability to just close out without having to find anyone and walk out the door has proven to be very valuable for them. Yeah. Well, Morgan, I know you aren't exclusively <clears throat> QR. How do you guys deal with you know the guests who basically come in and make it pretty clear they don't want to do this QR thing? What's the... What, how do you address that? Yeah, it, it really, it starts at the greet. And so that, that host stand in our model, especially with the number of activities we have spread out throughout the building, it's, it's really giving people the information they need to know. Where is everything in this building? Where, where is ax throwing? Where is golf? Um, and then explaining how service works. And <clears throat> we're, they're trained up front to where if somebody makes that face, when you say, oh yeah, just take out your phone and scan a QR code and they make that face, um, that's immediately when they just take a left turn and say, hey, I got paper menus right here. Um, we'd be happy to take your order. Uh, you can always sit directly at the bar and order from the bartender. Otherwise, just make sure to grab a table inside where we do have full service available. Um, and then our staff is trained, um, even if they're going to be ordering from QR, is the, second, the secondary greeting, which is just as important as the host. And sprinting to that table the moment they sit down. Hi, welcome. Is it your first time here? Have you been here before? 
Oh yeah, we've been here. Actually, we've already placed our order. Fantastic. Here's some waters. I'll be checking on you to make sure everything goes smooth. Versus, yeah, I've never been here before. Cool. Do you want to order through me or do you want to order through the QR code? Well, I want to order through you. Fantastic. Let's get started. And then yeah. we still use EasyTab where even if we're taking their order table side, um, we're swiping their card, authorizing it, and then texting them a link to the tab that we just created for them um, with the hope of enticing them to get curious, click that link, see their tab, see how easy it is to order within the system. So perhaps the next time they come in, they're familiar and they say, I don't, I don't need to wait for service. I can just take care of this myself because it's actually a lot easier than I and originally anticipated my first time. Got it. So you're using handhelds at the tables and then bar, <clears throat> bar POS. Yeah, handhelds at, hand, hand, handhelds at the tables, uh, bar POS, uh, and then the full uh, KDS system. Um, we lean pretty heavily on some of the dynamic print routing uh, with the complexity of our space and a, a bar on each floor. Sometimes we have people sitting in the arcade upstairs, but we haven't activated the second floor bar. So we're routing those tickets to the patio bar downstairs so that those drinks can still be fulfilled. Um, and then we're using a lot of the text message notifications uh, for when orders are complete. And that's also our weather plan for the patio. If food is destined for a patio that is now underwater and everybody has relocated inside, we have a quick way to be able to message them to say your food is ready for pickup at the, at the kitchen window, as opposed to the original table that it was destined for. Got it. Got it. Yeah, you. By the way, you have the most you have the most beautiful pictures available online. Of like, they're, they're awesome. That makes me so happy because for a long time we didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I feel your pain. We all the time have to hassle our operators to get to update their photos because uh, they make they make a big difference. Um, <clears throat> so, Chad, uh, if, if you don't mind, you guys are you're all handhelds and then bar service, I presume, as well, because you have a, it looks like you have a, a nice, very nice bar and extensive bar as well. Um, anything unconventional you guys are doing there? Are you trying to, um, I mean, if guests needs to bail, it's, it's basically classic service. You always present the check. Are you doing any QR payment on the check at all or anything like that? I mean, I know it actually costs more, but. Sure. Yeah, no. Uh, and, and really we don't even, uh, traditionally present a check because we're using handhelds. They typically, unless a guest, um, requests it or, you know, our, our staff is trained to offer, you know, would you like a copy of your check? But this day and age, there's a lot of people that don't even want a copy of their check. I think we see that kind of fall into an age range, typically like an older clientele that often want a copy of their check um, for yeah. whatever reason. Then younger clientele usually just say, no, I'm good. I'm fine. Um, they can they can browse through on the handheld and look and make sure that everything's right on the on the handheld check um, yeah. and then pay right then and there. So they're not having to wait you know, the handhelds are a beautiful thing. We we saw a cut down in about uh, 25% of um, time that we it took us to turn over a table um, using the handhelds as opposed to writing something down, going to find the point of sales. Oh, there's a line because two other servers are using it. Wait yeah. in line. Um, you know, all those little nuances, uh, especially when you have a big restaurant. Um, you know, we see well over 200 people, so. Yeah, yeah. Now we, we see those material differences on handhelds. I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious when you think about it, but it's funny in the fine dining world, people still want printed checks. It's it's kind of boggling to me. Um, the one thing I am curious about, do you get pushback ever on presenting the bill and then people have to pick the tip while they're holding that handheld out extended? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that there is, I mean, there there's, I'll, I'll talk about two things. One, to answer that question, I think certainly there's like a level of awkwardness in the beginning when particularly, I think it was more for my staff feeling yeah. weird standing there over a table um, while they're entering in the tip. But I think it's become a, a pretty much a norm for us. We've been using handhelds for probably four or five years now, somewhere around there. So I, I don't think that there's a, there's as much awkwardness about it anymore. We kind of have them as they hand over the, the handheld, we kind of have them like step back a little bit from the table. So they're not looking over the person's shoulder. Um, and I think that's worked, that's worked pretty well for the system that we have. Um, yeah. I think every once in a while, you're still going to get somebody. And, and I'll tell you that I'm a, <laughs> I'm I'm a young 44, I hope to say, um, but I still am hesitant to change with things because I just get nervous on what the reaction will be. And even the handhelds was something that I was concerned 
we were going to lose some intimacy between the between the customer and the server right that's like a that to me there's like a relationship that's there when you have full service of like sh giving really showing the customer like a good time and make sure they're having fun and and i was worried that was going to be lost because they're going to be staring at a handheld but you know our average server is probably 25 and they've grown up using uh, you know touchscreen phones and ipads they're not even looking at the <laughs> the handheld typically when they're bringing stuff in they just know where it is um yeah. you know finger muscle memory type thing and so um there none of that is the case at all and a matter of fact i think now it's it, it's pretty much the norm but I, even in the beginning people were commenting about how fast things were and uh particularly how fast the food was coming out of the kitchen even though our ticket times weren't changing it was just that that time between getting that order into the kitchen um, was cut down so much and that's what made it appear a lot faster and then same thing with the bar you know you have a big party of you know 20 people you can start sending drinks in five at a time to the bar and all of a sudden drinks are coming out <laughs> to the table while you're still finishing up taking orders so it makes the whole process a lot faster yeah um well tim wilson do you mind speaking of fast how fast can you get a beer to your patio with on a qr I mean, honestly, the, I, I fastest, mean... the fastest I've seen the beer get out there, like less than 20 seconds. A beer has been ordered and delivered to the patio. Yeah, um, I've been so, sitting in patios where you're, people are like, how did that happen? Did you? Yeah, I get comments all the time. People are like, wow, that was fast. And you're like, yeah. And I was like, anything else I can get for you? And they're like, no, I'm just going to order from the app. Obviously, I'm just going to get it real quickly. So um, no issues there at all. I don't know exactly what he's saying before. Like, you can put in orders while you're taking orders and it's great so yeah i mean it's yeah. it's funny how much fast how much speed matters right it's it's always a pleasant surprise and people i i find people always are very happy when things get there quickly um well i i feel like especially for places like ours tim where you know we're putting some of that transactional heavy lifting on the guest to do it um their expectation for you know speedy delivery is higher um, there's not a lot of trust, especially for first time people. I just sent this order out into the ether. Is anybody going to get it? Um, and if you can have those really short ticket times, uh, there's immediately that trust in the system. And then all of a sudden they're realizing that, oh, this could be to my advantage to be able to order my own stuff. It's not actually extra work. It's it's faster, better service. But you're always, I, I feel like here anyways, we're always under that microscope. We're always walking that razor thin edge where if things come out fast and consistent, like they normally do, uh, it's one of the better experiences that they've had. Um, mm -hmm. if, any, if anything goes awry, if they're missing a side of ranch with their French fries, and now they wonder how to get that. Do I flag somebody down? Is there a way to order it through the app? How do I, how do I ask for this one simple thing, a spoon for their soup? Um, then the wheels fall off really fast. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you, you got to have it dialed. Got it. Do you get many messages from guests? Because I actually use that feature, but I don't know how many people actually use that feature where people hit the message bubble and send something like I need ketchup or do they always flag someone? Um, that's a good question. We haven't figured out a way within how we're utilizing the system to effectively disseminate that information um, right. because some of those requests need to go to the bar. Some of those requests need to go to the expo in the kitchen yep. uh, and, and they all need to go <clears throat> one location kind of by default with how it works. Mm -hmm. um, and so other, other than adding items that would print tickets at their various stations, there's, we haven't discovered a really good way to solve for that. Um, so it's really ensuring initial order accuracy. Uh, and then because our servers are taking less orders table side, the whole goal with that is to drive more guest engagement so that they can go talk to tables, drop off a free beer sample, realize it's somebody's first time, make a recommendation for something to visit in the area for a tourist, that kind of thing, um, and really drive engagement. And you can have one server engaging with twice the number of tables that they would be if they were taking every order table side. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I was actually... No, we, have, we have, haven't found a good fix for that. Got it. I was at Caboose Tavern. I'm, I was thinking my own problems. I was there having brunch and... The server was totally weeded because there was like one server and, and brunch was a crusher. And so I ended up texting because we ordered through the server because they do classic service and brunch. I actually ended up texting in and I asked for my check because I didn't want to flag them down and they were you know, making drinks or whatever. So 
I guess I'm guilty of abusing it, but I don't know how many people actually do. Um, we've, 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 yeah, we ended up turning it off because it was going into a really busy expo screen. And I mean, sometimes um, those guys are, are, are four pages deep. I mean, we, we can seat 600 people and we'll flat seat 150 at a time. So if they're, if you're four pages deep in the kitchen and there's a message that pops up that I need ketchup, I, they probably don't even see it. I, th I think in your model, yeah, I think it would be hard. You'd have to do some kind of AI or, or something. We'll, we'll get there so, someday. Yeah. 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 We've, we've, we've put a lot of stuff on the tables in the caddies to try to get ahead of that. And when, then we've loaded uh, store and pours in the server, uh, you know, beverage stations throughout the building so that if somebody gets flagged down and asks for a cider ranch, it's no more than 10 steps away. Right. Right. Got it. Um, I guess I don't want to, Tim, do you have anything you want to add just because you have clearly two very different types of service, like one more digital and one more classic? Um, I mean, are there like, actually one of the things we're getting into here is like scheduling. Do you, does it have a material impact on how you schedule or is it more consistent when you're like, is it easier or harder for a QR driven model or a more counter plus? Cause I know you're actually counter plus QR at commons and, and more full service. It, how, how do you deal with that? How much of a difference is there? I mean, the, Having the QR codes are definitely reduces the amount of like scheduling. You, I assume you're talking about how much staff's on the floor. Yeah. Um, it definitely reduces that amount because uh, to a close point there, like you can have one server or one person on the staff. We don't really have servers at our larger place. We just call them all uh, floor associates. And they can take over a zone of like 20 tables and run around, make sure they're delivering stuff, feeding up things, talking to tables. Um, so you can run this behemoth you kind of see that that's our main floor right there in the picture um and we have two floors of that and a giant patio outside and we can do that whole thing with like five or six people um just running around outside you know you also have to have your bartenders and baristas and stuff but um it really reduces how much how many people you need to have so you don't have to have 30 servers on the floor right now talking to people so that's great for our, our labor costs of that one um as far as tavern goes um, that's but that's kind of the same. We would probably have like two servers can take that whole floor right there, and then you have another one on the on patio. Uh, you can see our patio, but it's not it's not a huge patio, but it's definitely you can seat you know thirty ish forty people out there. Um, and that person just kind of roams around out there, has a handheld, takes their orders if they want to. But most people are definitely okay with using just the QR code. So, mm -hmm. got it. Super just makes staffing and scheduling easy. You know. You only need a couple people to do stuff. Um, so one of the reasons we asked you to join is I know, and we didn't get to talk about this at all, uh, at Charleston and South Carolina, very classic tips model. Uh, Denver is probably moving more of the service fee model. And Caboose actually was a service fee model and is now back in the tips model because it's in Virginia, which is a borderline north-south state. Um, would you mind sharing some of your experience and how you guys kind of did that? I know, do you guys have a service fee, Morgan? Or how do you guys do things out there? Um, no, no, no service fee. Um, just, I mean, we, we in the private events world, yes. Uh, but day-to-day -day, day -day traffic, no. Um, we have suggested gratuities that pop up either mobily from QR or handheld presented checks um, yeah. with an auto close, close out at the end of the night, like most folks. Um, but no, it's all, it's all tip based. Um, yeah. and even, even with the hybrid service model and significantly less staff members running around, we're averaging 20 to 22%, um, since we've been open. Is, uh, is service fee trend going up or down in Denver? I'm curious. Is... Yeah. Mixed reviews. I, 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 you see it more and you hear more complaints about it. Um, yeah. and the lack of the lack of transparency that, that folks say that come with that we've we've toyed around with it um, but just don't feel that that's that's conducive to our model here and passing it through um, directly to the guests we we feel like we're getting them to do enough new things walking into the building got it makes sense and chat that, that yeah oh, cool. chat i'm assuming this is not something that flies in in south carolina um have you have you seen any of this stuff or, or where 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 trends going in your neck of the woods yeah i mean the only i don't know if you would call them service fees but uh, definitely a lot of businesses are starting to pass along like credit card fees um but not um not service fees i mean typically speaking it's i mean I, i'm not speaking for everybody there is certainly i think on the, the preliminary call that we had i could told you guys that 
We see it more commonly in like breweries where they're going to the QR code. But even in that case, I've yet to see where it's um, like a gratuity is included or there's a service fee that's included. It's still tips usually that are collected. Um, and so that's the same thing. We have a one, you know, the, the handheld set has, you know, tips that we suggest that they leave, but then in a line where they can also leave whatever it is that they want. Got it. And Tim, I know you guys recently changed. Um, how'd that work? And you, you lose any employees or, you know, disgruntlement? You went from service fee to not and to, back to the tip model. Yeah. So we, like you said, we had the service fee model for a long time. We just paid everyone much higher wage, but that we were upfront with the guests about that, where we were letting them know, hey, we're charging you this fee and it's to, so everyone's wages are higher. And the amount of backlash we got that, uh, very mixed reviews. I mean, it was like 50 50. You either loved the fact that we were paying our, our staff a whole lot more, or you hated the fact that you were being forced to pay our staff, which was an interesting argument when I was like, I don't know what they think they're paying for when they come into a restaurant. Like, obviously, you're paying for everything. Yeah. Um, so then we got rid of it. Uh, we went back to the street tip model. Um, that took a lot of like just checking out different models to make sure it was going to be something that would work out for our employees. So we didn't just jump into it just one day, just flip a switch and go back to the tip model. Um, and we told our staff what we thought they were projected to make. And they actually beat that hands down all the time. They make so much more with the tip model because I think the, the incentive there for them to be out there, we didn't lose any staff over it whatsoever. They're actually pretty happy with what what's going on. And uh, a lot of the customers that basically some customers had said they would never come back if we were going to have these service fees and we've actually gotten some of those customers have come back now that the tip model is back so i think with the proximity that we have to dc and, and they have a lot of service fees and a whole lot, lot higher wages going on in dc required there that people are just kind of tired of having to pay all the extra stuff so it's a big backlash for having any service fees so it's worked out well for us Got it. Okay. Yeah, I, cool. I, I, I feel the same way. There's a, there's a fee fatigue out there um, with, with the inflation that we've been feeling. Everything's more expensive as, as it is. And it feels like everything has a hidden fee. Um, whereas being a little bit more upfront and transparent with your pricing in a traditional model with, with normal tipping um, seems to be the way to go for now. Yeah. And, and it is funny because I'm, I'm very aware of the challenge of customers or guests saying, you know, I don't want to pay for the servers. And you're like, where do you think your tip goes? Because you're paying the same net effective amount, but perception matters more than I suppose reality in this case. Um, Will, do you have any, I know you see a lot of operators doing stuff out there. I'll, I just, I'm curious uh, on the, because you do see it on this side a little bit on the scheduling. Any, any thoughts or trends you know of? Well, you know, we, we see all of it because we've just got, we've got customers in all 50 states. And I, I think there's more of it. Um, and, you know, Tim, you probably have better insight than this to this than I do, but there does seem to be more of this in states that have, you know, changed labor laws and labor rates, California, Colorado, <clears throat> maybe in New York, you know, places where like Morgan, you know, that's just like, you kind of have to do that. And I, I got to tell you, Morgan, it's been interesting learning from you because, I mean, you're talking to a guy that, like carries a flip phone. So I'm not like, I, I'm the, like hand me the menu guy, but uh, however, and I'm also the person that just values people and presence and personal interaction so much. So, I, you know, my initial thing, this is just a, a, this is an education cycle, right. That we have to go through with consumers. And I'm like one of the ones you have to educate. And now I see it in a different light, having listened to you because you know, I'm thinking I don't want these codes to replace people because I like interacting with people. But what I'm hearing is more, no, 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 it's not that. It's just that if you order your your beer, um, ha had you had an actual real you know, iPhone, you order your beer on a, co a QR code, it comes fast. And what it gives you and your staff the opportunity to do is to go bring the beer out and use that as an opportunity to interact with and serve the guest and find out what us it needs. So I, I've just learned a lot just just listening to you and talking to you. And I, I suspect this this will continue to grow. And that's probably in the you know, it, I mean, we're a little slower in the southeast a lot of times with this stuff. But 
um, as laws change and, and consumer uh, education levels change. And I imagine a lot of it's moving in that direction. Well, yeah. And, and Will, it's, it's a double-edged sword, just like, you know, any new thing, it comes with new challenges. Um, and then one of the challenges presented by that is that if guests have the ability to order themselves, check out by themselves, and essentially have an in entirely self-guided experience, um, it becomes difficult to train your wait staff to continue to engage because the previous restaurant that they worked at, they took all the orders. If you take that away from them, there's a pretty steep learning curve for a lot of them to go, well, so then I'm just a food runner. I'm just a, I'm just a drink runner. What? And they, they, they fall into that tend to fall into that pattern of behavior of if I'll just wait for them to order and then I'll run their stuff. Um, there's a few of them that figure it out. And then that's where the, the culture starts to build. And we've, we've started to turn that corner. We have a long ways to go because in this model, people can hide, people can slack off. People can just deliver the food and drink that has been ordered via QR and not force themselves to engage and go above and beyond and deliver true hospitality. It allows for the time for them to deliver hospitality, but there's no guarantee without the proper training behind it. And that's something that we've, we've done really well at in periods. And then there's other periods where we'll bring on a few new staff members from traditional restaurants and it takes a, it takes a little while to get it through to them. Yeah. Um, Tim, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, does 80, 20 apply with a lot of this stuff? Like, I mean, cause I feel like if you, you, you know, yeah, you, you take somebody that goes, I can use this as an opportunity to be lazy and hide and not really do as much, or I can use this as an opportunity to be super engaged when I do take that beer out there and provide an amazing experience because I'm smart enough to know that that's going to you know, make me more money because I'm going to get better tips. I mean, that's always, yeah. always, always going to be better tips, right? Is that is that person-to-person -person interaction <laughs> I'm assuming that that's the 80-20 Pareto's law or whatever, 90-10 kind of thing that you probably run into in restaurants just if you're doing any. That's, that's, how I, that's how I feel. It's just a little bit front-loaded with unlearning um, how they did things at their previous spot because chances are they're coming from somewhere that did things very differently than we did. Uh, so some it, it ends up being that 80-20. Um, it's just front-loaded with getting over the hump of like understanding what we're doing here and getting them to buy into it. Um, Tim, Tim Wilson, I'm, I'm curious because you guys have been doing it for a while. Do you see any of that? And how, if so, how do you overcome it? Oh, that's, I mean, like you said, it's, it takes a lot of training and coaching of the staff on that one. You've got to tell them like, hey, we're not just going to stand here and wait for people. You've got to get them out moving constantly. So you have your managers or whatever leads constantly like breaking people up, moving them out there, talking to customers. Um, to your point earlier, when you're bringing that beer or food or whatever, that's their best opportunity to interact with any of the customers. You know, uh, we've got them also doing table checks. Like I said, they'll have that zone, be like 20 people. We'll be like, hey, your job is to make sure that all those people are taken care of and you walk up to them. Even if they've already ordered and you can sell, see they're doing the QR code, still go up to them to see how everything is. Doesn't matter. I don't care that they're on a QR. I mean, Obviously, you get those people that don't want to be bothered at all, but that's pretty obvious. They're doing some work. They have headphones on. Leave them alone. <laughs> you know? But um, and that's in like our big location. That's that's harder to do because it's just there's places people can hide and you don't even know they're there. Like someone can just walk out in the patio and be in the spot. that's all in the corner. We have all of a sudden an order comes in. We're like, where did that come from? I didn't know that person was here. Uh, our other location in Vienna, it's much easier to tell where people are. It's much smaller. So you can see everyone. Um, but that staff there, they are some of the most personal people you'll ever meet. They are happy to talk to everybody and like chat, chat them up. So they love doing that. So that one's a little bit easier. We just kind of like naturally got staff there that was great at that. And then every time we bring somebody new, they kind of just train them to go do that because they all, they all pull their tips too. So they all succeed if they, if they all succeed, basically. Hey, Chad, you guys are, uh, Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was sorry, just gonna... answer your question. Just... <laughs> yeah, no, it, no, it it does. It sounds like you're you're experiencing it very similarly to us, um, and addressing it. We're we're a little bit newer, so I think you know we're not addressing it probably as effectively as you guys are just yet. Um, but it comes down to that that initial training and retraining and nudging and nudging again. Um, and we also pool our tips, so it is we do live and die together. We succeed or fail together on that front. Um, so there is, you know, 
that can come with complaining, uh, but that can also come with some accountability on the team. Like, hey, pull your weight. I'm, I'm busting my butt. We're making the same amount of money tonight. Like, let's let's go. Let's move. Um, yeah. It's it to, to me. It's it's still been a, a net positive, um, but that is one of the unique challenges um, that's presented is unlearning how it used to and not <clears throat> walking up to a table and saying like, "You see this? This is how you order." Instead of <laughs> you know, "Hi, welcome. How are you? Oh, you already ordered. Fantastic. Have you been here before? Do you know what activities we have? Oh, you're new to Denver. Man, let me make some recommendations. Make make a friend. Give them some positive memory um, because your food and drink need to be good enough. I mean, ours are excellent, but that's not necessarily what's going to get somebody to come back today. Um, what is, is how they felt during their visit. And if they feel good about the experience, they're more likely to forgive you when you mess up and they're way more likely to tell your friends and bring them back to show off this cool new place that they found. And when they come back, they feel like an insider because they go, Hey, Hey buddy, check, check this out. And then two beers show up, you know, a minute later and he goes, we didn't talk to anybody yet. He goes, yeah, isn't that cool? And so they can become your biggest advocates and sell it to your new folks. Um, all you got to do is make them feel good the first time they're there. Yeah. Yeah. W I mean, Will, what were you going to say? Well, I was just curious since Chad's, you know, he's, he's a, I guess, multi-state operator, mostly in South Carolina, but Chad, you are in Texas. And I know you got some coin on board in Florida and some other places. Do y'all does, does this factor into where you, late wage rates and labor laws and things like that. Does that factor into where y'all decide to expand? Um, not necessarily where we decide to expand, but I think it will weigh into how we operate in different States. So um, for example, we're going to be opening up our first store in the Jacksonville, Florida market um, coming in probably late summer is our guess at this point in time. Um, and their, I think, minimum wage for tipped employees is is eight something an hour currently, but every year it's going up and up and up and up. And I think it gets up to like 16 at some point in time. And so you're forced to rethink the model, right? I mean, you can't have the same exact model that we have where, you know, our tipped employees are 213. And so for one of our tipped employees or, uh, or for one of their tipped employees, it would be like four of ours. So um, the, that you just can't continue to operate in the same way. You gotta, you gotta think outside the box and do something a little bit different. So um, we haven't put together the full game plan on how we're going to do that yet. So, um, but I think that's definitely going to be a conversation that will be had sometime in the next month or so. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I think the whole game in restaurants now is efficiency, right? Like we, we, and the two thirteen an hour, at least this is my observation is it it's not doesn't require the restaurant to be terribly efficient because if you overstaff for a bad Friday, it doesn't really hurt the restaurant that much. It actually does hurt the staff. Obviously they may quit if they're doing a bunch of slow Fridays. Um, but the economics aren't impossible. Um, yeah, it's a very fine line you walk for sure. Yeah. Because I mean, I think I, I, uh, I hope to think that most operators are like myself and we're very people first, right? Like we want to make sure that I believe that our, if we, we take care of our people, they'll take care of our customers. I'm not a customer first person. So, you know, right. uh, shoot me if you need to, but that's just the way that I've always been. So let's take care of our staff. And, and, and the, that case, it is really a fine line. Cause you're right. It's easy to be like, Oh, we'll just put 10 servers on they're only two dollars an hour like that's you know equivalent to you know one line cook but that's right. just not the case so we, you can't do that and and operate well too so it is a fine line that you kind of walk and, and dance along and and then you know in morgan's case is the complete opposite there's just no way you could just be like oh yeah staff however many servers you want that would never work for you guys because they're making probably almost what you know a, a line yeah. probably getting close to what a line cooks makes anyways there yeah, yeah. And, and that's just it. And our, our margin of error on scheduling is so much tighter because of it. You know, I can I can have three extra bodies and all of a sudden I completely missed my mark. Um, yeah. yeah, it's your, so, it's your yeah. largest cost, right? It's your largest mm -hmm. cost in the business is, is your people. And so, you know, that's a that's the constant like struggle. But that's also where, you know, tools like Schedule Fly come in that make your life a lot easier for scheduling and understanding what your budget's going to be and how to schedule for the week and how to schedule for the day and so on. Well, and yeah. it's, it's, it's a really difficult balance and it's a difficult thing to unlearn because, you know, I, I grew up in restaurants and all traditional service models and, you know, the, the, the old 
go to is just you know throw a body at the problem if if guests are unattended to you need more people there to attend to them um and i still find myself uh, in shock sometimes uh when the model's working um and somebody is trying to figure it out because we missed them at the greet and so we're <clears throat> rather than throwing bodies at it though we have to throw more effort into training um and accurate signage and our touch points of service, which have shifted to the delivery of the first beer, the delivery of the water, and not the initial order taking meet and greet like it is in a, in a service model. Um, so that those pain points still exist, but how you address them has changed significantly. And so even as an operator, it's been very difficult to learn how to let go of some of that stress when you see it happening and you realize that you can't fix it right now. You have to wind the clock back. You have to think about, okay, how do I fix this for next time with more effective training and, and better understanding of how the model works? Yeah, I got to throw, I just want to, uh, I'm going to throw in something about another client of ours. It's a food hall, right? It's a one Metro stop from our office. Um, so food halls, in my opinion, uh, <clears throat> I'll say this bluntly, food halls prior to this have just suck because you basically stand in multiple lines while someone potentially holds down the table and then you maybe all get to come back and sit down and eat together. Maybe. <laughs> but in a lot of food halls, it's basically everybody standing in separate lines. And then hopefully you have a table at the end. Anyway, talk about SOPs. I was really shocked. I didn't know this. They, they actually drop off water bottles at the table, make sure everything went in fine. You can order from all the vendors on the QR. It's super cool. I didn't know they were going to do it this way, but it's it feels so much higher touch to have someone come to your table, drop your food off, drop water off. And it's just like, it goes over and above from an experience level. Um, I, I thought it felt very elevated. Obviously it's standard in a restaurant, but you're seeing all these models like changing. I mean, cause entertainment's not twisted in and it's, it's intriguing. So you make a really good point, um, which has to do right with, with the, the guest expectation walking in. So you walked into a food hall with an expectation of sitting, of standing in line and maybe getting a table at the end. And then all of a sudden, even if you weren't Tim from GoTab, right. all of a sudden your, your expectation was immediately exceeded because you got to snag a table, all sit together and order from any of the different food stalls in the place and have things delivered to you. Well, um, yeah. Well, he, right? Even like, they even brought water because they saw that I sat down or they detected from the QR that we sat down because we scanned and then it lets them know. So they then bring waters to the table. I was like, oh, shit, this is this is actually next level. This like this is nice as opposed to a, a chore. Um, well, one of the challenges we face is we took over a building that had previously been a punch bowl social with a full service model. So right. entertainment was still there, um, but it was full full service with cocktailers and, and waiters running around. Yeah. Um, and because of that, the building, just the layout, the way, where, how the rooms are built, how the bars are positioned in the rooms, the multiple levels, um, architecturally, it looks and feels like a table service restaurant. And so that's an expectation for us with just the design of our space that we have to overcome and retrain people that this space that looks like table service isn't table service. Yeah. Um, and whereas, you know, you go into a food hall and you're like, okay, I'm not going to get anything for service. And all of a sudden you get waters and the ability to order from a table and you're like, oh man, best food hall ever. When, yeah. you know, it, it was minimal, minimal service, exceeding expectations. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's interesting how to employ this in, in different places and how the, the actual physical layout of the space can play a big part of it too. Yeah. And expectations are everything. Like, I think that's part of like where Chad in his neighborhood, if he were to do something different, it, it, yeah, as you tried, it sounds like at different times, uh, you get can get a lot of pushback. Um, and it's, you know, so even handhelds at one point were a different concept uh, and mm -hmm. less so now. Um, I know we are running out of time here. Do we have any questions, Patricia? I know you dropped off, but I'm looking at the chat here to see if we have any questions um, in the Q&A. I put a couple in for you, if in specific Slack, um, let me pull it up for you. Um, can you talk about like average check sizes when you're using this kind of model, if you've gotten any way of understanding the trend line or how it's impacting check sizes as well as tip sizes? Well, I think someone said tips are still 20 to 22%. I don't remember who yeah, said tip, Yeah, tips. Yeah, yeah, that was me. Tip, tips are holding strong. Um, I haven't, haven't really seen any issue there. 
Um, check average is something that we've we've talked about quite a bit, and really, it, it takes a little bit of time because what you're going to end up with is a check average number that doesn't reflect a traditional check average number. So it's it's valid when compared to itself. Um, but if I have four people sit down, they all four scan the QR code and they all close out. Traditionally, that would have been potentially on one check and then split payment at the end. So that could have been a hundred dollar check and driven check average up. Whereas now they're ordering independently. Those are all four individual checks. So yeah. you'll, if you were to compare my check average with our system to yours table side, yours is going to be significantly higher, but more so to do with what I just described rather than they're actually spending less money. So then really it just becomes once you have enough data, if you're in six months to a year and you're comparing your year over year numbers within GoTab or the, the ordering system that you're using that can do this, right? Then the number becomes valid when compared to a previous version of itself. Um, yeah. But it, it can't really be considered a traditional check average. Yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds like almost a better form would be your per person average, but then you might have a party of four that does order all of the same QR code and you don't know that that's a party of four either. So you know, there's, a, yeah, we, yeah. you know, we, we talked about, I was like, can I put like a, a camera with some AI behind it at the front door <laughs> and count how many, how many bodies are coming in? So I have a rough guess count. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, like th 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 there's no way I, somebody with a clicker up front, right. you know, Hey, there was a thousand, a thousand people through the building. Plus we got like five exits to the patio that people from the neighborhood just wander in. So yeah. there's that, that is a, a dream that I have is to know exactly how many people were in, <laughs> well, we're, in the we're, building that day. So we are, I'm going to do a plug. We are integrating with soul link, which is a camera system. Um, and that should be done like in a couple of weeks, I believe. Uh, so there is the possibility of doing that and being able to go back and look who was sitting at the table, who scanned the QR, because one of the challenges when I owned a restaurant that was full service, uh, servers were smart enough to game their tip numbers. So we think they were better than they necessarily were by you know putting a guest count as lower than it actually was. So, you know, <laughs> so my general sentiment is like, if you let the server enter the, the guest counts, it, you really can't trust that data. Uh, at least that's my my sentiment. I don't know if any. Yeah, we've we've tried we've tried doing it too, and and it wasn't ours wasn't as nefarious with with uh, just the way that the tip pool worked. There was no incentive for them to do that, um, uh, or at least metric that we were tracking. Um, but it just it just didn't happen. There wasn't any 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 real incentive for them to follow through with it. So it was never accurate enough to be valuable. Oh, cool. yeah, and then you have brunch where it's like starts as four people, turns into twelve, and then turns into eighteen, and then turns <laughs> into four. So it's like okay, I don't I don't know what that gets count was. Yeah, you know, and the, the 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 camera the camera integration thing, right? It's like so cool. Right. It's super creepy. It's super creepy, but it's really cool. <laughs> but it's really creepy. The reality is the camera <laughs> the cameras are already there in most. That's places. it. I got I got security cameras everywhere. I got to cover my butt somehow. Absolutely. I I think cameras are your friend. They're they're definitely not your enemy. There's stuff yeah, to get no, you want to know. Ninety nine times out of a hundred, the camera use is for liability concerns, not because right, of yeah. tracking tracking anything nefarious. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking yeah, about just just sitting there staring at the camera all day, waiting for someone to do something. <laughs> no, I go back and download footage because somebody slipped and fall fell, yeah. <laughs> and I want to make sure that you know their story matches with our story. Right, correct. Um, I know we got uh, only a couple of minutes left. Anything else anybody wants to add before we wrap? Well, got it. Got a word. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Pre appreciate the time. This was very insightful. Cool. Yes. Thank you so much for all the time, Chad. Uh, it was awesome to have you here and uh, and meet you throughout this event. And Will, thanks for helping pull it together. Oh, and no. Thanks. Thank you all so much, GoTab. And this was awesome. I learned a ton. Thank you all. This is fantastic information. You have a good one. Thank you all. Have a great one. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys.